Uh, I don't know. It was working yesterday perfectly, so. Let's, um, is that better? Okay. The uh, readings from, oh, there we are. Now it's like the voice of my conscience. Uh, uh, the uh, letter to the Galatians continues. Uh, St. Paul today uh, lays out, you might say, the history of his vocation, what brought him to where he's uh, an evangelist, an apostle, a preacher of the good news today, uh, and sort of uh, tries to explain to the Galatians his credibility in doing that. Yesterday, uh, the Gospel had the uh, parable of the Good Samaritan, and the lesson seemed to be to go and do. Today, Jesus is at the home of two friends, sisters. The lesson seems to be to sit and listen. This is the feast day of St. Francis of Assisi, and so we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Of course, we open ourselves again to his Spirit present in this place. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. You have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. And let us pray. In today's Mass intention, we're remembering uh, Mary and Glenn Talley. O oh God, by whose gift St. Francis was conformed to Christ in poverty and humility, grant that by walking in Francis' footsteps, we may follow your Son, and through joyful charity come to be united with him. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, you heard of my former way of life in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it and progressed in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries among my race, since I was even more a zealot for my ancestral traditions. But when he who from my mother's womb had set me apart and called me through his grace was pleased to reveal his son to me so that I might proclaim him to the Gentiles, I did not immediately consult flesh and blood, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. Rather, I went into Arabia and then returned to Damascus. Then, after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to confer with Cephas and remained with him for 15 days. But I did not see any of the other apostles, only James, the brother of the Lord. As to what I am writing to you, behold, before God, I am not lying. Then I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was unknown personally to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only kept hearing that the one who was once persecuting us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. So they glorified God because of me. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. O oh Lord, you have probed me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. My journeys and my rest you scrutinize. With all my ways you are familiar. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Truly you have formed my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I give you thanks 
that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. Guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. My soul also knew you full well, nor was my, my soul also you knew full well, nor was my frame unknown to you. When I was made in secret, when I was fashioned in the depths of the earth, guide me, Lord, along the everlasting way. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. It's a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus entered a village where a woman whose name was Martha welcomed him. She had a sister named Mary who sat beside the Lord at his feet listening to him speak. Martha, burdened with much serving, came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me by myself to do the serving? Tell her to help me. And the Lord said to her in reply, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Over the years, I remember sort of dreading when I would be uh, at home with my parents on vacation or whatever and doing mass, and this gospel would come up. Uh, my mother was a homemaker, and uh, her sister-in-law, that was probably her least favorite person in the world, her name was Mary on top of it, so uh, she identified with this. Uh, she said, you know, if everybody uh, was like Mary, uh, Jesus wouldn't have had dinner that day. Maybe true enough. However, the lesson, and it's, it's vintage Luke. I mean, the women get names, which isn't terribly common. Uh, they, they're named, and Mary chooses the posture of a disciple. Uh, she sits at the feet of the teacher, and she listens. I mean, what, what greater gesture of hospitality could there be for a teacher uh, and Jesus, the greatest teacher, of course, is a guest in their home, and so she, she does exactly that, and Jesus doesn't scold her for it, uh, but actually admires her, uh, says that she's a model. Both doing and listening are, you might say, the two sides of the same coin of discipleship. Today is the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi, one of the more popular saints on the calendar, uh, the opening prayer today, I'm not sure what the origin is. You could find out, I guess. In fact, I was still doing research on things like that. But it says, it asks that we could walk in the footsteps of St. Francis. One of the famous uh, visions of St. Catherine of Siena, who was a Dominican tertiary, but she, she was a mystic and she would have these visions, uh, visions of heaven often, uh, and in one of them, she saw that the, the goal of every soul in heaven, when Jesus would walk by, the goal was to exactly walk in his steps. And she noticed that everybody had to make some effort to look down, some more effort than others, and still didn't do a, a very good job. But she said the one soul that could walk in those footsteps without even looking down was St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, it's a, a great uh, statement uh, for him. Uh, he has had such influence, uh, you know, the beginner of a, of a poverty movement, uh, a, a movement of uh, nonviolence, uh, even in his own lifetime, they think there was probably a hundred thousand uh, lay Franciscans who took vows of uh, 
nonviolence. It did a, uh, you know, it turned the feudal system in a way up on its head because usually in the feudal system, a person would make a, a commitment to even kill for a feudal lord. But now that they were so many who took this vow of nonviolence, uh, that didn't work very well. So maybe it helped to end uh, the a feudal system. There have been seven popes uh, who were Franciscans. Today's Jesuit pope has taken the name Francis. Uh, he was canonized a saint just two years uh, after his death. Uh, one of the most beloved saints. Uh, most people can relate to him. Many have a, a bird bath in their garden or something with uh, his image on it too. Uh, we celebrate the variety of saints. Uh, people like Francis of Assisi, part of our history, uh, part of the you know, wonderful sort of individuals that God has called and set on fire with the good news. It's still a good news that is alive and well today, and now it belongs to us, and uh, it's our duty to live it and to pass it on too. So we celebrate St. Francis of Assisi. So stand in God's presence here then with, again, our prayers and needs. Today's Mass intention again, we're remembering uh, Mary and Glenn Talley. We also think of our, all of our family and friends, neighbors, members of the parish, especially so those who are in a tough space today. We pray to the Lord. We continue to pray for an end to this terrible war in Ukraine, the Pope even appealed to, to Putin uh, the other day to stop the war immediately. And we pray for an end, a definitive end to the pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Loving God, you do call us to be disciples. We ask for your grace to respond to that call every day, and we ask all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it'll become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it'll become our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to Almighty God. As we bring you these offerings, O Lord, we pray that we may be rightly disposed for the celebration of the mystery of the cross, which St. Francis so ardently embraced through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love. And that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled, their great example lends us courage, their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them. They may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, again, especially uh, Mary and Glenn Talley today, and all who've died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Every disciple uh, has had the prayer that Jesus himself taught, St. Francis too. We have it now, and so we can say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's turn to one another, then, and offer some sign of God's peace. Lamb of God. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
and let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, that through these holy gifts which we have received, that imitating the charity and apostolic zeal of St. Francis, we may experience the effects of your love and spread them everywhere for the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Over 40 years ago, uh, I was a Franciscan. I joined uh, when I was 19. Uh, I'd love to tell you about that someday, but it would require a protracted uh, conversation, so maybe, maybe we'll have coffee someday and I'll tell you about it. Uh, the other priest that sends uh, students to the school here will be here for Mass tomorrow, and then I'll be back Thursday and Friday this week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you today, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace.